Next category, here's a big one. Best episode. This was a really tight race, but the winner is... Welcome to the fifth annual Bestie Awards show. The Bestie Awards are an opportunity to look back on the year and to award people awards. Now, will they get a plaque? No. But will they get a medal? Also no. The awards here are abstract and ethereal. The true value of a Bestie Award is to be experienced in your heart, not to be held in your hands. Also, it's a lot cheaper that way. Every year we do this because it's a really cheap and efficient way to make content during the time of year where we're making bank on YouTube. Give me that Christmas money. In this video, you're gonna see categories like best co-host of the year, most succulent meat, best balls, and more. But first, I want to take a moment to reflect back on this year. 2022. It was the year that we got out of COVID and went back to normal life. At the beginning of this year, I was still out of Vietnam and I didn't know when I was going to be able to come back. From the time I left Vietnam to the time I was able to come back to my home here, it took about 10 months. During that time, a lot of traveling happened. In January, I wanted to do a trip that was completely crazy, insane, and epic. Before that, we had shot a lot in North America, but I was ready to do something completely different. So I had this idea for an Africa series called Three Africas. Our first country in Africa was Zimbabwe, and it started off like an actual nightmare. I flew there alone, planning to meet my team, and none of my luggage joined me. About six days later, I finally got all my stuff back, but hey, Ethiopian Airlines. Classic. Zimbabwe was a side of Africa I'd not seen before. People were super friendly, funny, the food was interesting. I loved it. But then we went to a different part of Africa. Egypt was easily the most challenging shoot we did this year. We were harassed and harangued by government officials. We had our gear taken away, our cameras taken away, our lights taken away, and we had to shoot the whole series on iPhones. Incredibly, the Egypt series was the most successful this channel has ever had. One very cool thing that's happened in Egypt recently is that they changed their laws around photography. Now, travelers and locals can take photos on the sidewalk, on the street, without needing a permit. In the past, you did need a permit just to whip your phone out and to take a picture. I would like to think my team is partially responsible responsible for raising awareness around the issues of doing photo and video in Egypt. From Egypt, we went to Tanzania. It's gotta be one of my favorite countries in Africa. There's just so much to see and do there, from safari to tribal stuff to eating good-ass street food in the city. After Africa, I still couldn't come home to Vietnam, so I hung out there with my wife until we were ready for our next production, which took place in Uzbekistan. I had shot in Uzbekistan previously three to four years before that, so this was my second shot, and we went super deep this time. The Cruz, he's a good friend of mine, and he helped set up our trip and join me for the whole ride. From Uzbekistan, we took a quick hop over to Pakistan. The first time I'd ever been to Pakistan and we had an amazing time working with Ali to set up a shoot from Lahore all the way up to the Hunza region. I found Pakistani food to be incredible, flavorful, super meaty, and then Hunza. Hunza was like a mountain paradise, extremely beautiful. From Pakistan, we did a few smaller trips. First, we did two videos in India, in Varanasi and Hyderabad. Varanasi was an incredible city, very loud, but extremely beautiful and just so much to see. It has real character. From India, we went to the Philippines and did a short three video series. I've been to the Philippines many times, so this time we got to dive a lot deeper into very local Filipino food. From there, we went to Thailand. This was my first time focusing on the Northern Chiang Mai region. I got to hang out with the long neck people and I got to eat buffalo placenta. I cannot believe I ate buffalo placenta and I got barely a million views. Guys, it's placenta. Why didn't more of you watch that? It's the world's most extreme vegan food. No animals had to die. <laughs> After Thailand, it was finally time for me to return home. At this point, I was very sick of traveling and I was just excited to be home. I was excited to see Calvin again. And so we decided to shoot a noodle series here in Vietnam. And we did five videos all throughout the entire country. And my gosh, that was a lot of noodly fun. After having a little bit of a break in Vietnam, we went to the country of Mongolia. Here I got to work with the Buttock Boys and fulfill a trip I wanted to do for a long time. It was really fun to do it with Andrew and to get to travel the whole country and get to see a lot of this vast, amazing, place. Also, we ate a horse and a camel. After Mongolia, we went to Indonesia. In Indonesia, we shot all over the place. Many different islands, many different flights, but we got to tell so many different unique stories. There is just so much cool stuff to see in Indonesia. After that, we went to Sri Lanka. This was my first time ever going to Sri Lanka. I got to work with Ruzena, and she invited us to see things that people had never seen before, like the neck bulge people of Tamil. Why do they have bulgy necks? They say it's from holding bamboo. Mm. I say you basically got a breast implant on your neck. No disrespect, it's very unusual. 
After Sri Lanka, we had just two more countries left. The first is what you're about to see in the next week. It's going to be the first time the main channel has visited Europe. We went to the Faroe Islands. Here we covered a vast array of unique food, everything from birds that we hunted to whale meat. After Faroe Islands, we did our final trip of the year and we went to South Africa. South Africa is one of the most known countries in all of Africa. It is a complex and diverse place with a lot of really interesting food. And that is a series that just wrapped on our channel. So if you add it all up and include Vietnam, that is 14 countries in one year. By far the most I've ever done and probably I won't do that many again. It was a lot. Just a moment, I'm gonna reveal the winners of this year's Bestie Awards, but first I wanna say a huge thank you to my team. It's very easy when you watch a show to assume we just rock up in some country, go see some food and start filming. But no, there is a lot of work and preparation that goes into this show, and a lot of it is done by other people. At this point, we have almost 20 people working on this show to make it happen. Between our main channel and our second channel, we're putting out about three videos a week. It all starts with pre-production, where we have a producing team working on research, reaching out to local fixers, buying plane tickets, designing the trip, pitching ideas, Ideas, doing logistics, and then eventually going out to execute the shoot on the ground. And then we have the production team, including a producer and our two shooters. Right now, we're usually shooting two countries back to back. For example, we went to Indonesia, and then immediately went to Sri Lanka. Those trips can take up to three weeks, and it's very demanding for the camera guys. Once the videos are shot, it goes to post-production. Here, I work with the editors on developing the story, writing voiceover, and eventually crafting the final edit, which you guys get to see on YouTube. From there, it goes to a mastering editor, who works on the color and audio to make it look as good as it possibly can. Since I'm the face of the channel, I'm always getting a lot of credit, but I love it when you guys comment on the cinematography, the editing, the music selection, or the topics that have been discovered by our producers. This show definitely would not happen, it could not happen, without the best ever food review show team. The best travel food team in the world, as far as I'm concerned, although I'm very humble. So hypothetically I would say that, but I didn't just say that. I did. From here, I want to tell you the winners of this year's Bestie Awards. Jumping into a huge topic to begin with, Best Co-Host. And the nominees are Calvin Bowie from the Vietnam Noodle Tour. I'm going to gnaw on it. I love gnawing on bones. Don't give me a joke right now. This is nothing appropriate time. What is, there is nothing funny about that. The Cruise from the Uzbekistan Cross Country Tour. <laughs> oh my God. Nice. Bro, this is someone's culture. Oh, it's yours. Andrew from the Mongolia series. Is this good? Are we doing good? Yeah. Yeah? Oh man, it's hard to communicate in Mongolian. Matthew from our food tour in Jamaica. After all of your troubles, you have to pour and run out for that one. Big up and respect. Thank you, I have no idea what you said. And Herman from our series in Mexico. Whoosh. Ah. That's incredible. Ay caramba. Ay caramba. And the winner of best co-host with 78% of the vote, it goes to Calvin Bowie. Calvin is a guy who lived in Vietnam when I came here and I met him at his taco shop and he gave me a free shot of tequila. Our bromance has been kicked off ever since then. He's building up his own YouTube channel right now on FKN Deliciousness. Calvin, I love you as a friend and I love you as a co-host. Super I, tender, juicy. I, I like I mean, the use. It's, it's just, it's so good. Category two, most unique food. And the nominees are goat head wrapped in intestines in Indonesia. Next, they take that head with the seasoning caked inside and they're gonna wrap it shut with an intestine. With an intestine. Buffalo placenta in Thailand. Oh, that looks like exactly what it's called. That is fascinating. Goat bodic in Mongolia. Look at the steam pouring out now, coming out of both ends, like when I have Indian food. Sorry. Ant egg and cactus tacos in Mexico. Whoa, that's delicious. I think this is one of the best nopales that I've ever had in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Or stuffed pigeon in Egypt. I've been told you can actually eat everything. These bones seem thick and hard. I don't know how that's possible. And the winner for most unique food goes to buffalo placenta. It is one of the most unique foods I've ever had. It's not even like a body part. It is a byproduct of giving birth. It actually tasted pretty decent. That was maybe the most horrifying part. So hey, listen, if your wife's pregnant, eh, think about it. <laughs> Category number three, the scariest food of 2022. And the nominees are milk lungs in Uzbekistan. This is like two liters of milk going inside of here. Look, transformation. Alveolus inside yeah. of the lung, they're being filled and they used to be pink, but now they're all white. Cow stomach grass soup in Indonesia. It's so juicy, yeah? Yeah, it's so juicy. It's like sugarcane juice. <laughs> Vervet monkey in Tanzania. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like I just went to a county fair and I got the worst oh. prize ever. Oh, I want the stuffed monkey. Um. Well, it's a real one. Raw cow liver with blood and bile in Tanzania. This is kind of a delicacy here. Oh gosh, that was such a big piece. Anya, 
Anya. Anya means yummy. And grilled eels in Vietnam. There is no bigger ratio of ugliness to deliciousness. It looks like a bat skin on the outside, which conjures memories of Wuhan, labs, experimentation, Bill Gates. This was a close one, but the winner is the vervet monkey in Tanzania. Should I be clapping? We ate a monkey. I actually did not even shoot this with my team. I went by myself and with a small group of expedition leaders to go shoot with the Hidzabe people. It was amazing, stimulating, exhausting, and it was a real test because sometimes I didn't know how to act. I showed up and they had a dead monkey. And then I was like, can I eat this? Am I canceled? So I did my best to eat how they ate. I tried everything and I ate monkey. Scary? Absolutely. Part of me hopes that this isn't what human tastes like. I don't want to know what human tastes like. All right. I've officially eaten monkey. Category number four, best food reaction. And the nominees are steak taco with bone marrow in Mexico. Oh my God, that's good. Aki and saltfish in Jamaica. Yo, you can't go wrong with the national. Oh, it's so good. What the f that is one of the best things I've ever had. Mud in Zimbabwe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's no hiding the fact that it's that is mud. mud. And what's in here, iron? Yeah, iron. It tastes 100% like I just picked up some dirt and ate it. There's no like hidden notes or anything like that. That's mud. Rock cow liver with blood and bile in Tanzania. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, so. <laughs> and Mulida in Pakistan. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is the most confusing thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> and the winner, running away with it, is steak taco with bone marrow in Mexico. Amazing. I had some big reactions in all of these. When I was in Tanzania, I was eating raw organs and drinking raw blood. It was not that fun. But can I tell you what I prefer to eat over warm blood out of a freshly killed goat's body? Tacos. Those are some of the best, most high-end delicious tacos I ever had in my life. And I got to share them with Calvin. The cheese has a nice layer of texture. The filet cooked beautifully. But to top it all off, the creme de la creme, that bone marrow. Sonny, this is probably the best taco I've ever had in my lifetime. This is elevation at its primal peak. This is a one of a kind experience. This is really incredible. Moving on to category number five, most awkward moment. The nominees are catching a fat tailed sheep in Uzbekistan. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, man. This is not what I wanted. This was not my intention at all. Calvin's cameo in Vietnam. What I do once in a while in the show. Oh, you do cameos? Do you consider me a co host? I don't consider you a celebrity. So, how about a friend? Friend cameo. I'm going to make a dish in Jamaica. What are you gonna make from this? What I'm gonna make from this, I'm gonna make a dish. Yeah. All right, well, well good. sounds good. Let's get going. You said that in English, in Mexico. This is more spicy. I feel like it's the same spicy. ¿Cómo puedo decir este, Gabo? Este, yo siento que esta está más picante que la anterior. Bueno, ya dije que esta es más spicy, but... You said that in English. And Calvin tries to translate in Vietnam. How long did it take you to get good at this? Why is she talking about her dry clean right now? The winner of most awkward moment for 2022 is Calvin tries to translate in Vietnam. He does his best and he's better at Vietnamese than me. Have you been eating jellyfish from the time you were a kid? Since she was a little one, like oh, really? this. We are halfway through and we have five remaining. Category number six, most mouth-watering meat. The nominees are barbacoa in Mexico. Oh. Oh, dear Lord. It's crazy to think that it's only made with salt. Right, there's no overabundance of seasonings. It's just like the natural flavors of the lamb. Sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. Gachi Gachi barbecue in Zimbabwe. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. It's a bit chewy, but still juicy. And it tastes like a beef roast or just kind of like yeah. stewed beef, but that is in the middle of cooking. The chone belly in the Philippines. This is the one I wanted the whole time. <laughs> it has my dental record. If I get killed now and police find this, they're gonna definitely be able to identify my body. Yeah, and you can see it's a smile because he liked it. <laughs> Sheep neck steak in Uzbekistan. Mm -mm -mm. That is awesome. And the seasoning, it's just perfect. Beautifully stewed, soft, juicy, fatty. It's even better when you dip it. True, all the drippings that came off of there. Mm. So good, man. That's incredible. Or Yak meat in Pakistan. Oh, that's so good. It's been braising for hours. So the meat is so soft, the intermuscular fat has just been rendering down all the connective tissues and tendons has been kind of melting down. And running away with it, with 51% of the vote, is the lechon belly in the Philippines. 
We did such a fun video in the Philippines. It's something I wanted to do for years and years and years. We got super affordable and then medium priced and then expensive lechon and we tried them all in one day. I almost had a heart attack, but it was so delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Best bite so far. Best crunch, but the skin's a little bit dry out here and there. And so the fat is there to bring some of that soupy, oily, yeah. porky action. Hallelujah. Next category, most enlightening video. And the nominees are Africa's Apocalypse Man in Zimbabwe. I want to corrupt you. This could be an evil thing I'm doing. Maybe you will love this so much and you can never try it again. If that's the case, I'm sorry. But here you go. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's very nice. Nightmare food tour in Egypt. Oh, the van is at a police station. All the local people have been taken out of the van. They've gone through the shots on my phone, and we don't know what's gonna happen next. It's possible they'll try to delete the footage. Luckily, we've already just airdropped the footage to a decoy phone, so it doesn't matter, but hopefully it doesn't get to that anyways. But this is what it's like to shoot here. Manene Death Feast in Indonesia. Why is it when they take the coffin out, they pretend like they're dropping it? What is happening? It's more like shaking. Like waking them up? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Eating with Asia's long neck tribe in Thailand. Because uh, it's blocking their chin, so it's hard for them to open their mouth. For them. Wow. Is that the same for you? When they first put it on, she wasn't able to do anything because it hurts a lot, so she just had to sit still and just kind of rest. Oh no. And then how long did it take to get over that? Around 12 or 13, they were starting to able to get used to it. Or how to eat when you can't show your face in Indonesia. Aisha, in what situations can you take off the niqab? Di rumah, saat hanya dengan... She can take off the niqab only with all women and also with the family. Or oh, if in the restaurant they have like a private room, she can take it off. Oh. Yeah, and the winner for most enlightening is eating with Asia's long neck tribe in Thailand. This is a unique video because usually when we're out traveling and documenting cultures and tribes, we want it to be as authentic as possible. That's just not really possible with the long neck people because they don't live how they lived hundreds of years ago. So when we were thinking about shooting there, we were wondering, do we try to hide the fact that there's tourists here all the time or do we just reveal it? In the end, we revealed how intricately interconnected their lives are to tourism. The woman I met and interacted with was incredible and open and it was a very memorable experience and I'm glad you guys liked it too. Dude, the back of my throat is numb. <laughs> what is going on? I can't feel my throat. <laughs> drink some water. She said drink some water. Next category. Here's a big one. The best episode of the year. And the nominees are Costly Journey to the Afterlife in Indonesia. The magnitude of the funeral is determined by the family's pocketbook. The burial of a noble elite can result in the slaughter of 25 to 100 buffalo. But even your average Joe still commands the sacrifice of up to eight buffalo and 50 pigs. Africa's apocalypse man in Zimbabwe. So he has kind of a rubber band here that he's gonna use to really tightly secure this to the wood. Can I hold this to pretend to help? Ah, uh, that's okay. All right. Exotic meat in Mexico. Is this eaten because it tastes amazing or because it's a lion? Pues cuando... The first time is just for curiosity. They're like right into the meat. But after that, if they like it, they go buying this meat, like yeah. constantly. Most extreme diet in Africa. Oh, he slurped it up like it was jello. All right, hold on, save some for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> or Pakistan street food at night. We have the bread and we're digging straight. Do you actually eat the chilies? Yes, of course. Okay, is that respectable? All right, I'll give you that. She'll oh. give me that. This was a really tight race, but the winner is Pakistani street food at night. I love this episode because it's a lot about food, but in seeing the food, something about the culture is revealed as well. If there's any place people have had misconceptions about in the last 10 years, it's definitely Pakistan. I was really happy that we had an incredible woman who could join us for that video, just to show us a different side of Pakistan and to be able to see the country through her eyes. I think Northern Indian food is very similar. The kind of food you get in Punjab or Delhi, Amritsar, that's very close to the Pakistani food. Yeah. Is that the prayer? Yes. How, about how long does that take? Three minutes. At this point, we only have two categories left. And the next one is one I hold close to my heart. It is best balls. The nominees are testicle michiote in Mexico. Have you ever eaten testicles? Once, but so long ago, I do not have a fresh memory of what they taste like. We can make some new memories right now. Pig eyeball in Vietnam. Behind the eye socket, there's a piece of meat there that not many people know about. Out of the whole head, this meat is the best meat you're ever gonna get. Grilled goat testicles in Jamaica. Do women eat the testicles as well? Yeah. So it's men, women, children, grandparents, 
parents. But when I was growing up, I used to tell the girls, it will let them grow um, beard. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wanted it for myself. <laughs> Kishk in Egypt. Have you ever left cheddar cheese out on the counter for too long and it's dried out a little bit, but you ate it anyways because you're an animal like me? It tastes a little bit like that. Or fried dumplings in Jamaica. This was not on the syllabus, like a Johnny cake. This oh, is what? exactly a Johnny cake. Yeah? You know, sometimes I do feel like a food expert. You are a food expert. Another close one, but the winner here is pig eyeball in Vietnam. Pig eyeballs are not my favorite ball-shaped food. Maybe the berries from Captain Crunch, that would be my favorite. And then as you go back, there's the retina and all the muscles that help control the eye. Mmm, mm-hmm. Stunning. It's like no other texture that I could ever describe. It's soft, it's fatty, it's moist. It is now time for our final category, best second channel video. I can't remember when I started the second channel. All I know is that this year is when we kind of figured it out. We used to do reaction videos and taste tests and stuff like that, but it turns out what you wanted to see was just kind of more of what we do already. The second channel is usually just me and my wife. We film it on an iPhone. It's very low rent. It's easy. It's quick. And we want it to kind of be the opposite of the main channel. The main channel is a little bit more serious and we try to keep it really professional and looking great. And the second channel is an opportunity to just be fun and free and loose. It satisfies another side of entertaining and filmmaking that I really enjoy. Guys, if you've not checked out the second channel already, please do so. More best ever food review show, and that is exactly what you're gonna get when you go there. And we're gonna find out which video you liked most from this last year. And the nominees are $1 USA Street Food in LA's Filipino Town. We've been cooking for 30 seconds. It's a complete disaster already. Sunny. What happened, Mark? It was Sunny. going so well. Your cinematic footage caused us to burn some I know, we were trying to get nice shots. African tribes try American candy. <laughs> That was Tastes like fruit, roughly. Oh, I love it. She's so cautious. Ooh. You like it? Oh. $300 versus $1,600 steak in the USA. I think this is more expensive. The filet mignon. No. Oh my god. Oh, no way. I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> Pakistan street food versus India street food. It's a tough competition, but I gotta say, between Pakistan and India, I like this Nihari more. Mm -hmm. Sorry guys. Or Asian tribes try sour American candy. She's trying it out. Uh-oh. And the winner with 34% is $1 USA street food in LA's Filipino town featuring Marcus Weems. Did she call you Food Ranger? <laughs> Hello, Ranger. Sorry. Yeah. And is a Ranger. Is it Mike Chan? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Mike Chan. Mike Chan. Oh, my Chan. Mike Chan. Yeah, I'm Chan. Huh? So those are the 2022 Bestie Award winners. Give it up. Now, let's talk about next year. In the next 12 months, we're gonna be producing series from 12 different countries. What I've done differently this year is I've already selected all the countries ahead of time. In the past, I used to look ahead maybe a month or two at most, but now we have everything scheduled for the next year. This allows us to get better co-hosts to come join us. It gives us more time to research and go to difficult places. It also allows us to move all around the world. If everything goes according to plan in the next year, we are gonna be visiting all six continents in one year, showing you an incredibly diverse and varied human experience foods you've never seen before, tribes, street food, home cooking, village food, hunting, anywhere there's a unique story to tell around food, we're gonna be there. Before I wrap up, I wanna thank all of you for watching this show. Putting a big team together like this, traveling to faraway countries, it requires resources. But since so many people watch this show, we're able to turn that revenue into even more entertainment. Otherwise, that is it for this one. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. It's a zebra skull, by the way. Cool, huh? Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.